Hello, I'm Rachel and I make videos on motherhood and lifestyle and today I'm going to talk to you about baby loss awareness. So October the 9th to the 15th is baby loss awareness week. It is a week that is very close to my heart because I myself have lost two babies. One in four pregnancies do end in the loss of a child and I am that one in four twice over. So I thought I would make a little video to mark Baby Loss Awareness Week just to tell you a little bit about my story. I do talk about the babies that I lost quite a bit because to me, you know, they are still my babies. They were still there at one point, even though they're not here now and I never got to meet them. They were still my babies and they always will be my babies. And when my children grow up, when Amelia grows up and... Sam already knows a little bit about like what's happened. When Amelia grows up, I will make sure that she knows that she had brothers, sisters. I, I never got to find out what they were. So, um, my first miscarriage that I had, both, both the babies that I lost were miscarriages. So the first of my miscarriages happened on the 5th of June in 2012. I had gone shopping with my mum um nothing nothing out of the ordinary everything was absolutely fine as far as i was concerned i found out really really early i think i was about two weeks pregnant when i found out that i was actually pregnant um so obviously i knew that it was still really really early days um but yeah i'd gone shopping with my mum um and i just decided i needed the toilet like you do um Went to the toilet and there was a little bit of spotting, um, which can be quite common in pregnancies and it can be completely, you know, completely fine. But me being who I am, absolutely just panicked. And I went out, said to my mum, mum, you know, I'm, I'm bleeding, there's spotting. Where we were shopping, there is um, like an urgent care centre, just in, just in the town centre. So took myself off there to be checked out they said yeah everything looks fine they did like um, an internal examination said everything looks fine it's probably just a little bit of spotting sent me home so I came home tried to carry on as normal um, and then the spotting carried on well what I thought was spotting what I was hoping was spotting that carried on for a few days but it didn't really get any heavier so I tried to like calm myself down and thought, you know, maybe it is just a little bit of spotting, it's not getting any heavier. Um, so you know, maybe it's maybe it'll be okay. Then on the bank holiday Monday, um, I just I don't know why I really clearly remember it being a bank holiday Monday. Um, but yeah, it was a bank holiday Monday. I had like quite a bad tummy ache. And I don't know why, I just didn't really think anything of it. I didn't link it to the bleeding. I just thought, oh, you know, I've got a bit of bellyache. Um, went in the bath to try and, like, make myself feel a bit better. And when I got out of the bath, it must have been, I think it was about 10 or 11 o'clock at night, I got out of the bath. And, you know, like, when you're drying yourself, you obviously wipe. And I pulled the towel away and it was just covered in blood. And I remember like straight away I just knew I knew what had happened I still had really really bad belly ache like belly ache that I'd never had before it felt like really really bad period pains and I've always suffered really badly with my period pains um but this was like off the scale um so as soon as I saw all this blood, I panicked, I screamed. I was living with my mum and dad at the time. I screamed for my mum to come up the stairs and I was hysterical by this point. Um, and I just said, mum, mum, I need to go to the hospital. I'm bleeding, I'm, it's really bad. And I just knew, I knew what was happening. Um, so we got, my, my dad got the van ready. Um, by this point, I'd managed to get myself dressed I think I put my pajamas on um, I've managed to get myself dressed and my stomach was hurting me that much I'd just gone and sat on the toilet because you know when you get really really bad tummy ache and you just feel like you need a poo 
I was in so much pain and I'd just gone and sat on the toilet to try and like, I don't know, relieve myself of some of the pain, didn't really know what to do. Um, and I remember my mum coming upstairs saying, come on, you know, you need to, if you want to go to the hospital, you need to get off the toilet. And I felt something slide out. And I mean, at the time, because I, this had never happened to me before, I didn't realise what it was. Um, I just thought it was like a, a clot of blood, you know, like when you're on your period and you lose clots. I thought it was something like that. Just didn't even think. So my mum got me up off the toilet. We went to the hospital. I was bleeding so badly by the time we got to the hospital. I literally, as I stood up to get out of my dad's van, I could just feel it like gushing out of me and yeah as I said I, I just knew I knew what was happening um, so obviously I was crying I was screaming I was absolutely hysterical um, went into the hospital they took me straight through to an examination room um, came and explained to me you know they, they just said basically you know if, if it is a miscarriage there's nothing that we can do um, and they left me there for wow it was a good couple of hours I think um, they give they gave me some strong painkillers to take away the pain and just like kind of left me in this room I had my mum with me and Tom who some of you may remember he was my best 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 friend he'd come up because just all the way to the hospital I just I kept saying I want Tom I want Tom I want Tom so my mum rung Tom and Tom obviously I think he beat us to the hospital actually I think he was there before us bless him um yeah so they gave me the painkillers really strong painkillers um just left me because obviously the, there was nothing they could do if that is what was happening they told me straight off you know it does it does look like it um but they needed to keep me there because they didn't want me losing too much blood, obviously. And then the nurse came round who was looking after me and said, you know, have, have you noticed anything come out, like any lumps? And then I remembered about feeling this thing slide out when I was on the toilet at home and I told her and she said that probably was your baby. Um, so here. I knew straight away I knew when it happened that that's what it was but she just kind of like confirmed it and she said you know there's nothing we can do um, they did want to keep me in hospital that night but I wasn't for staying I just wanted to go home and just like be on my own they would agree to let me home but if the bleeding didn't stop or if it got any worse I had to go back um, so I went home, what I think it was about, it was really late when I got home, I think it was like four in the morning, something like that. I know I was at the hospital for hours and hours and hours, um, I think it was like four in the morning when we eventually got home and I literally just laid down and cried and cried myself to sleep. Um, wow. Well, just bringing it all back. I don't think I had any extra checkups after that the first time. I think, I think because of the amount of blood that there was, and because I'd felt the baby come out, um, I think it was just a case of, you know, we'll leave you. If it get, if the bleeding gets worse, if it doesn't stop, you do need to come back. But I don't remember there being any extra checkups after. Um, I was just left to get on with it so that was the first miscarriage for me when you first get pregnant before any miscarriages or anything um, you just think it's something that happens to other people it's not something that's ever gonna happen to me and then all of a sudden it had happened to me so then when I got pregnant again in 2016 um, I think I just thought you know well, it's happened now it's not going to happen again surely that would just be major major bad luck um and then obviously as soon as i found out i found out again really early i think i was about two weeks again um i've just always had a knack for knowing that i'm pregnant 
Um, so I went straight to the doctors, the midwives, because obviously, even though in my head I was thinking, surely it's not going to happen again, in my head I was also still like, oh my god, what if it does happen again? You know, I was panicking. I think I was about five weeks and I started getting tummy ache and panicked because obviously tummy ache last time ended in the miscarriage. So I'd gone up to the hospital, told them that, you know, I'd had a miscarriage in my previous pregnancy and that I was getting tummy aches and I was really early and that I was really panicking. And because of the circumstances, they agreed to do an early scan just to see whether they could see anything. Um, they did warn me that you know, without with me only being like five weeks, I probably wouldn't be able to see anything. So they did this scan. It was an internal scan because I was so early and, you know, like the, the abdominal scan probably wouldn't have shown anything at all. So they did an internal scan on me um, and the lady said when she did the scan that she couldn't see anything in the sack, which straight away panicked me. I just thought, oh my god, not again. Um, but she did say that because I was so early, you know, it could just be that it was too small to see. She said you don't usually start seeing anything until about six weeks. So she agreed to bring me back the week after for another scan. Um, just to see. She said by then, like, if I came back the week after, she said that if there was a baby there, then she would be able to see something at least. Um, and she did tell me not to like, tr like spend the week trying not to panic. But obviously when, when you've already had a miscarriage and then this is going on, you have to, you, you can't not panic, do you know what I mean? So I spent that week not really knowing how to feel. You know, I should have been happy that I was pregnant, but I was panicking because I just absolutely convinced myself that it was going to happen again. So I went for the scan the week after, which will have made me about six weeks. She did the scan again, an internal scan, and she said that there was nothing there, nothing had grown, there was no baby in the sack. Um, but. I was really reluctant to like believe her and listen to her because I was so desperate to be like I was so desperate for there to be a baby there I was like no 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 you're wrong um, because I'd had no bleeding or anything and the stomach ache had gone so I just thought oh you know that's that's a good sign um, but she said you know there's, I'm really sorry there's no, there's no baby there um, you probably will start bleeding in a couple of days um, but I was just clinging on to that tiny, tiny little bit of hope that she was wrong because, I mean, you know, they are wrong sometimes. And I just clung on to that little bit of hope. But then a couple of days after I had that scan, I did start bleeding and I knew. And that was on April the 29th, 2016. They didn't, want, they didn't need to keep me in that time because the bleeding, for some reason, I don't know whether it's because the baby hadn't like started to develop I don't know I don't really know how it works but the bleeding that time just was nowhere near as bad as the first it was just like quite a small period um so they didn't like ask to keep me in or anything they just sent me home I just went home got in bed and again just cried myself to sleep so that was my second miscarriage and then about four weeks after the second miscarriage, I started feeling really sick. And for me, when I've been pregnant before, that's always been one of the first signs. I've always been really, really sick. And my boobs have always been really, really sore, um, which they were, they got really sore. And I didn't really, cause I didn't realize that you could get pregnant so fast after a miscarriage. Um, so I didn't think anything of it I just thought you know I thought I was maybe just coming down with something with the feeling sick and I thought the sore boobs was maybe like my body getting back into like a monthly cycle um, so I left it for like a few days and it didn't get any better 
and in the back of my head I just had this little voice saying do a test do a test and I thought no you know I can't be pregnant I've only just lost a baby um but then because of that tiny little voice in the back of my head I got my hopes up so I got Dan to get a test and it still showed as being pregnant and what I'm saying still showed obviously after I've been told I've miscarried I've not done any more tests um it still showed as being pregnant so you know I didn't know how to feel um I didn't know whether to be happy excited scared like conf I was confused because I didn't like I said I didn't realize you could get pregnant that fast after a miscarriage um and I phoned the midwife and she said you could be pregnant or it could still be hormones from your miscarriage still showing up so I left it another couple of days and did another test and it was still showing as pregnant um, so obviously like this was like four or five weeks after the miscarriage so I just took that because I wanted the baby so much I took that as right okay I must be pregnant again and I booked myself in with the midwife went to see the midwife I think it was a week or two after that she checked me over and said yeah congratulations you're pregnant um, and I think I think I cried because it was kind of a mixture of being happy and absolutely terrified of it happening a third time um, but the support that I got obviously this this pregnancy was Amelia's pregnancy um, but the support I got during that pregnancy was amazing I was up and down to the hospital all the time because I was so so scared that I was gonna miscarry again every little white twinge or tummy ache or whatever I just panicked um, I had quite a few episodes where I was up at the hospital for reduced movements because like every time I sat down and thought do you know what I haven't felt the baby move for a few hours my mind went into overdrive and I just panicked but they were great with me they checked me out because they knew that I'd already lost two babies they checked me out every time just to put my mind at ease and obviously this third pregnancy well fourth for me because I already had some but this pregnancy was fine and Amelia's here my rainbow baby if you didn't know a rainbow baby is a baby that's born after a stillbirth a miscarriage or any kind of loss I have a memorial tattoo for my two just twist my wrist a little bit so you can see it um it was originally just that I got that done for my first baby that died June the 5th 2012 and then when I had my second one I had the date that I lost the second one added as well uh, it's just a little butterfly with the rainbow and the baby feet in the heart um, so yeah that reminds me every single day not that I could ever forget because the second miscarriage and Amelia's pregnancy were so close together I did actually ask the midwife if it was possible that I'd been carrying twins and I'd only lost one um, but they just they seemed adamant that it wasn't that it was a, a completely separate pregnancy that is my story please do share it um, I mean I know everybody's not going to be interested in my personal story but um, with it being baby loss awareness week like I said I do think that it is a subject that people need to talk about more and if you have enjoyed this video I mean it's not a very enjoyable subject I know but it would mean so much if you click the like button down below subscribe and please share the video to get the word out there about baby loss especially during baby loss awareness week I will see you in the next video which will be quite a bit more upbeat than this one Thank you for watching. Bye.